Now we know everybody is familiar with Death Row Records. Once the West Coast hip hop heavyweight label spearheaded by Suge Knight and Dr. Dre, now owned by Snoop Dogg. Despite the success of NWA, many say the gangster rap scene would not be what it was without the addition of Death Row Records in the 90s. With an array of talent from the Dog Pound, Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, the DOC, Lady of Rage, Tupac, Nate Dogg, and many others. Death Row released an array of platinum and gold selling albums, but for the most part, it was just the heavyweights being featured with album releases, with minor artists subsequently shouted. So join us as we take a journey back down the road, looking at some of these unreleased albums and artists. And everybody look toe down from the Hennessy and Earth. Now, let a young G through. Get up on the stage and fuck it up like I usually do. It's like a jump the boogie as I jump and make a hit. And if you don't like the sound, then you can shake the spot and split. Biatch, biatch, I can't be stopped. Try to steal a flow, get thrown against the wall like a cop. And when I come through, you better bow down. It's like one, two, six, give it up for the town. Now, the big homies wanna see us on the court. We done grown up. Besides, they smoke too many new ports, they can't hold us. When the non ball hit ya, penetrating split ya. Thinking your whole pull up bar, they get rich ya. I paint the shit to make you see the perfect picture. The Palm trees chronic leaves stacking ships, bruh. Ain't no telling why they love the West Coast. Cause we brought some boats and toast and dug the boat. Switching lanes, ditching traffic to LA from a seat that in that heat up. Cause things get drastic. So, YGD, the top dog, was born Derek Wade, February 17th, 1979, in Grenada, Mississippi. And he's better known by his stage name, Top Dog, and YGD, the top dog. And they say he was raised in Compton, California, and he signed with Suge Knight's Death Row Records. So what's kind of interesting is, which is sort of similar to The Realist, who was born in Texas and stuff, and I know a lot of these guys get a bad rap where people compare their sound and their style to namesakes. Obviously, Top Dog was Snoop Dogg, and he was born in at a time where people felt Suge Knight was trying to take shots at Snoop, utilizing his No Limit album title, Top Dog, putting it on this artist, and this artist having a same sort of style, demeanor, look, and disposition. Once upon a time in a place to be, on the dark side of the CPT, there lived the young G, growing small to make the story interesting as me, the top dog. According to Wikipedia, it says he was shot in April 2003 by LA police after a heated argument broke out, resulting in a shootout, and he's been widely criticized for having a similar vocal style to former death row artist Snoop Dogg. So in 1998, Suge Knight, although being locked up, wanted to relaunch some new rappers for the second generation of death row records. And he pushed Top Dog, better known as YGD, as one of his first new faces, making his television debut appearance in the All About You remix on the Tupac Greatest Hits, which is a huge album, but a lot of people was thinking what happened, it was kind of displaced. The new Snoop Dogg was with No Limit now, but that was a huge song everybody knows Snoop from, but it was replaced with Top Dog, who had a lot of people scratching their heads, wondering what's going on. You've got this guy kind of sound like Snoop, you see him in the video doing his thing. And this song it managed to generate some kind of buzz. And also there was a hidden track on a gang related soundtrack called Going Back to Cali, which a lot of people might be familiar with, which took a lot of shots towards Biggie, Puffy and all that stuff. And um, there was a remix of Going Back to Cali, which featured Eastwood when Eastwood was with Death Row. So, I mean, the Going Back to Cali track, I ain't gonna front, I always thought it was a dope song because one thing about Death Row, you've got a lot of Tupac fans and people like that whole kind of rider energy and aspect. And people still like to see carried forward after Pac's demise. And to some degree, whether people agree or not, it was carried forward with these new guys like YGD, The Realist, Swoop G, Lil C Style, and some of the guys that were there before that were still representing Death Row. And you guys coming in like Top Dog was representing that rider energy, you know, going back to Cali, pretty much being the spokesperson and being the voice for perhaps how Shug felt and how a lot of people in the West Coast felt at that time. We're not here to talk about that shit. What we're here to talk about is the newest inmate to Death Row, Top Dog. I don't love him, you don't love him, shit. We don't love him. I'm back. The bitch was cool, I know the cock was mad. He said, 
yeah, baby, don't trip, no doubt. Then I tell the bitch, get the fuck out. We don't love, we don't need, we don't love, we don't need, we don't love, we don't need. So the video for All About You got heavy play, and in 1999 when Shug dropped the Chronic 2000 with the new raster, it featured a lot of tracks with Top Dog and the Realist, and all these guys getting together. And the single for that was a track called Cinderella, which was a remix to a Dana Dane track with Snoop had already done as well. And there's no limit top dog album called Snooper Fella. So it was very conflicted, you know, hearing all these different stuff going on. I think to a degree it hurt Top Dog's potentiality of a career. There's some songs I've heard it really flow tight and where I'm like, okay, you know, we said a little something. But similarly to the realist, I don't think a lot of people was gonna completely hear him out with all the um what some might say mimicking and stuff, what was going on. So he never actually got to put out a Death Row album, but he released an album in 2010 called The Renegade and featured on a lot of singles with the Death Row camp. Songs like We Don't Love Them, Wanna Be Like Us, All About You, which a lot of people would say sounded very Snoop Dogg-esque. So what do you guys think of YGD, the top dog? We're going to be chiming in with top dog soon. He spoke on an interview at one point in regards to Snoop Dogg and trying to call him and contact him or something. Let's see if we can hear this. Thing was going down. I, I don't. Now, have you since then? With then, this whole thing was going down. I, I'm pretty sure it's all over now. Have you seen Snoop or talked to him since then? No, I check it out. But I just found that like he had a birthday a couple of years ago. He had a birthday. I tried to reach out and <clears throat> you know, say happy birthday. You know, with like 25, 27 million people on Twitter or whatever. You know, I guess you know you probably don't see it, but it's you know it's kind of funny how you would. Not see me like reaching out as a grown man to try to squash beef or whatever differences we had or why the shit even became what it what it became, you know. I reached out and tried to, you know, hey happy birthday champ and enjoy your day and you know, I didn't get a response. So no, I haven't talked to that cat, you know. I see me posting shit on Instagram and shit about their bullshit. Now I just see people like, you know, I see now I see I see the guy like, you know, doing like, you know, Posting pictures, just like the shit I'm posting and shit like that, you know, like little shit, just little shit to where I know you're watching me, but it's like you can't say nothing, why you can't say nothing if you're watching me, you know? New, was that something that unfortunately had developed uh, because of maybe uh, some tensions between you and him, or was that manufactured by some other people that, um, you know, that under that may have put you and him at odds with each other unintentionally? No. Well, at the end of the day, you're your own man. And I spoke to Snoop a couple of times, you know, when he was at Source Magazine. I asked him, What's up, champ? I see you talking shit about me in this magazine. Oh, that was before I met you. That was before I met you. Like, okay, well, it's right. cool, fuck it. And then after that, he just went on to the no limit top dog shit, the no limit out, the super fella, all this little weird shit. But you know, once I like really got the scoop on this shit, I was like, you know, okay, I see what type of cat you are. So, you know, most of it like you, I just brushed that shit off. I'm not even worried about it because, you know, it is what it is. You know, that's like somebody you know, you know somebody else like that, you know, and you don't fuck with them. So. I just kept stopped trying to reach out until like a couple of years ago. I just try I didn't try to reach out to be friends and so I just tried to reach out to be a man, you know, reach out and just say happy birthday since it was his birthday and I didn't get a response, so Yeah man. Yeah, so there we see a clip from Top Dog saying that he did reach out to Snoop at some point for his birthday and he was subsequently snubbed. And he alluded in that conversation to suggested that Snoop had actually taken the top dog from him and the Snooper fellow and stuff like that. And here we see mixed reviews from people in the comments. Some saying top dog is a talented OG, generous with knowledge of the game. Some people saying, here's a clip from an old interview that was published in The Source, April 1998, with Snoop saying, I heard Death Row put a record out from a guy top dog. I think that's his name, YGD, the top dog, where he talks about Puffy. And he sounds like me. Some niggas in New York think that's me. That ain't me. I love Puffy Combs. That's some fake ass nigga should got to sound like me. That's why God ain't blessing Suge Knight because he's acting like the devil right now. Have people said shit to you thinking that you did this song? I had to talk with Puffy and Puffy told me that some of the niggas thought it was me, but he was like, nigga, I know it wasn't you, dog. 
I wouldn't even bust on no whack shit like that. I'm trying to make a song with Puffy, not talk about him, Snoop said. So that was a quote from Snoop in 1998. It's kind of interesting how things go full circle because now Snoop's in ownership of Death Row and has been speaking about potentially partnering with Puffy. We're going to try and reach out to Top Dog and see if we can get him in on the show at some point. So what did you guys think of YGD, the Top Dog, his features on the credit and Death Row around this time? Do you think he was a counterfeit Snoop Dogg? Or do you think he had a little bit more to say but subsequently got a bad rap? in my pocket book, so take a look, I'm off the hook like a jig, and that nigga talking shit, you can't see me, working like you in a psycho zone, nigga get locked up, now you barking shit all in the microphone, but I'm not tripping off the dumb shit, too many styles for you homie, a nigga about to run shit, gun shit, they hit the fucking corner, cause if you fucking with the dog, you use a fucking goner, a nigga wouldn't want you, cause I play dirty like Dirty Harry, hanging outside with Slick Kirby and Larry, and what the fucking mission is some gangster shit, with that death row and dark side, cause that's it. Count it like a rap, smoke it till it's nothing left. And then I turn around and pick up a cup. Cause I'm that tall, slim nigga that don't give a fuck. With my mind and my spine on the grind all the time. At the same time, getting at a motherfucking dime. Do my ghetto ass here with my piece on my neck. White t-shirt and some gas. What the fuck you expect? I still look fresh. Whether it's flesh or TV, scratching niggas and these bitches off my dick like a flea. Cause I'm the top dog, boss hog. I fucks all y'all up every yeah. time I touch the mic for a show, dog. Niggas ain't shit, but some motherfucking fleas and rats wanna squeeze they gas when they see a young ball and motherfucker trying to stack his snaps. Clock his grip, look into his rib, you pop in his clip. For what? Trust no one, and he never leave the house without packing a gun. Cause these streets ain't shit, dog. Niggas be tripping. Spot the dog in traffic, then they think I be slipping. But I'm so bold, cold, swift with technique. That even my freak got to hold the heat when she cruise the street. Cause my style is so sweet that all these motherfuckers gonna be up the creek. The top dog nigger feels it right. He just feels it tight. The top dog nigger feels it right. He just flips it and splits it and kicks it tight.
What's cracking? What's cracking? I'm out here in the UK in the Strata Council Tour, man. Much love. And you know you rock with it, man. It's a little easy E and we about that online. So we're gonna get it cracking, man. Peace, family. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and check us out on about.online.com. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook for exclusive playlists and social media for all different types of segments and content.